This is prophetic word number six out of eight that I received on Sunday morning, November the 24th, 2013. The title of this one is Time for the Fulfillment of Promises. And I'm going to go ahead and read it now. Today is the day that my promises shall be fulfilled. What have I put into your heart? Today is the day that you shall see my promises fulfilled. The time of maturity has come. The righteous seeds that I have planted within my children shall come to full maturity. The sons and daughters of the Most High shall arise to full maturity. Today is also the day of abortion. For those that will trust in me for salvation, the seeds that Satan has planted shall be aborted. My enemy has planted many seeds in the sons of men. Some will come to full maturity. For those whose hope is in the Lord, the evil seeds shall be washed away, never to return. The grip of the enemy shall be broken. I have set you free. You are free indeed. The grip of the enemy shall be broken. All his evil seeds shall be washed away. The weeds that he has planted in your garden shall be uprooted. Today is the day for the maturing of the sons and daughters of the Most High. Today is the day for the fulfillment of my promises to you. I will do all that I say I will do. The gifts that I have put inside you shall spring forth to full maturity. Allow my faith to rise within you. Am I a man that I can lie? I have spoken it and I shall perform it. Praise the Lord. That's a good word. He's very, very encouraging in these words, guys. Letting us know how much he loves us. And that while there's bad things happening and going to happen in these last days, there's many, many good things. And God has, has let us know over and over that he is in control and that we have nothing to fear. And in this word, he's telling us that the promises that he's given to us, they will be fulfilled. Don't believe that things are going to be cut so short that God's promises will not be fulfilled. The things that he has promised that you will do, you will do those things for him. And the Lord is setting the stage now for these things to take place. And... You know, we've talked a good bit about the good and the evil seeds, and we know that we know that Satan is constantly planting seeds, planting planting evil desires, and you know we know that words are seeds, and all the you know we're just bombarded, and we're you know we're supposed to come into God's presence daily to be cleansed, you know, like the washing of the feet, you know that's what that represents, you know. We don't need to be saved again. We're already born again. We belong to the Lord, but we need to come into his presence daily and allow him to wash away everything that has contaminated us during the day. And we do our best to avoid those things, not to allow nothing to come in to our eye gate and our ear gate, into our soul, into our spirit by the, by the enemy. But we live in this world, and it's hard to avoid all the all the flying eras and everything that Satan is sending. But we know that we can come into his presence and we can be cleansed. And guys, we know that we have authority. I want to talk just a little bit about authority because God has given us authority and he has indeed set us free and we are free through him. But we have to, we have to exercise that freedom and the devil's a hard head and his demons are, they're rebellious. And they're constantly warring and fighting against us and shooting fiery darts and doing everything they can to hold us down. But we have authority, and we, we have to use that authority. So I want to read a few scriptures on the authority that we have. Because this builds our faith. Okay, Matthew 10, 1 says, And when he had called to him the twelve disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, 
to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. Okay, Luke 10, 1 through 2. And after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others, and he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he was about to come. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, and the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord, to, uh, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send forth labors into his harvest. Skipping on down to Luke 10, 9. And you guys can go back and read that whole chapter if you like, but I'm just picking up certain parts of it. So Luke 10, 9. And heal the sick that are in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Jump on down to verse 17 through 19. And the 70 turned again with joy, returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the authority of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Guys, if you belong to the Lord, you are a disciple. You're a student of the Lord and he has given you power and authority over principalities and over powers to command them and they must obey when you do it in faith knowing why you're able to do that that we come in the name of the Lord Jesus because he has given his authority his name so they must obey it's the same thing as if Jesus was speaking when we speak to them in his authority in faith okay let's go ahead and let's go to Mark 16, 17 through 20. And it says, And miraculous signs will follow to those believing these things. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will be, will be well. Then indeed, after speaking to them, the Lord was taken up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And going out, they proclaimed everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word by miraculous signs following. Amen. Guys, it's the same for us. He commissioned us. He told us to do these things. He told us we had authority. We don't just have to take anything the enemy throws our way. And we know what's from God and what's not from God. We know that sickness and disease is not from the Lord. Even though I have talked to you guys about before, there are times when the Lord does allow that for reasons. And we have to accept those. But many times, it's simply because we're not doing our, you know, we're not doing the work that we should do. We're not commanding those things to leave us. We're accepting what they want to give us. And so we have to take authority and we have to command those things to leave us. Torment and spirits, we have to recognize Satan. We have to recognize, you know, what they're doing, the, the lies, the torture, the mental torment. Because I'm not just talking about sickness. I'm talking about, you know, anything from the devil, temptation to sin, you know, sickness and disease. Yes, mental torment, you know, mental disease, all kinds of things. Anything that comes from Satan, we can we can speak and command those spirits to leave us. And when we stay, do it in authority, we stand in authority, not giving up, because they can be hard-headed, they can be rebellious. But you have to know your authority and command them to go in, in, in the authority of Jesus. And they must leave you. They must go. Guys, God has all kinds of amazing things for us. And in this word, he tells us that his promises are going to be fulfilled. That we do have a lot to look forward to. And he wants us just to keep our eyes on him and to believe him and to trust him and to know that he's in control and he's taking care of things. Well, guys, that's all I have for today. God bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you. 
and I'll get the, uh, this is number six. I have two more that the Lord gave me on that one morning, and uh, I'll get those up as soon as possible. I'll have you take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.